Welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. Thank you for staying with us. It's the final half hour of the show. We'll get to sample your views back at home. Feel free to call in. Our lines are on your screens in just but a few. But before we get to that, I just want to talk about the other developments that have played out in the week. We've conversed briefly matters to do with the gender divide, which we'll still pick up on. But there are a couple of issues that have played out. We've seen the developments around the Haiti development, which we'd like to discuss just briefly, and equally those key appointments that have been made by President William Ruto Odoyo. As you finalize on the gender issue divide, talk to us about the Haiti deployment because the <laughs> police officers, according to reports, who are withdrawing their interest in being deployed to that country due to the scenes we've seen on social media or news about the state of affairs in Haiti. Yeah. As I come to that, you know, we are generally very unanimous about this gender issue, the three of us. Uh, but you see, it is not good enough to say it ought to be done, it is wrong. We need to provide a way forward. It's very important that as a nation, we start to put things in place, affirmative action in place, that begins to nurture the girl child right from the time they go to nursery school. So that by the time they become adults, they are at par so they can compete favorably without all these other affirmative actions, without women rep thing, without nominations. So we need to identify what makes the girl child different from the boy child. What can we do so that they grow at par? But this idea of trying to legislate how we will make them equal is to come and take old women and give them things they don't deserve. Take old women and favor them against men. Let's start favoring the girls when they are children, yeah. not when they are seeking political positions. That is going to save us all these conflicts in the law. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you, you are talking about... Uh, Haiti. Haiti. Yeah, or Haiti. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you were talking about some policemen withdrawing, but I told you something. There are people who have mastered the art of painting anything white, black, and people will believe it. They will talk negatively about something, and people believe it. They keep quiet about it, and it just goes like there's nothing wrong. I normally say this, especially when we debate the, the, the housing tax and, 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 the, and the railway levy. When railway levy was introduced, that, uh, that, that railway was just reaching Naivasa, and that is it, one line from Mombasa. All Kenyans are doing export are paying 1.5% railway levy tax. And they are still paying it today and nobody has complained because no politician of repute came and disputed it. But now, when we brought the housing, it's been disputed even in Homa Bay where the first beneficiaries were. Yet the money is collected from all Kenyans and first invested in Homa Bay and then next Kisumu and some other towns. But even those people who can see the structures going up are complaining. So it depends on what the key politicians say about something. The moment key people talk negatively about the Haiti deployment, there are people who buy it wholesale without questioning anything. I do not know much about what goes on in the streets of Haiti. But policemen have to be there. I don't know whether they necessarily need to be from Kenya or from elsewhere. But peacekeeping has always been there now and before. <coughs> but why you, we hear of some policemen do not want to go is because the way it has been painted. Okay, okay. So do you have concerns? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's put a bit of perspective into this uh, Haiti conversation and remove the politics. Number one, Haiti is a country that is in big trouble. Today, as we sit here, the airport is not functional. Unlike Ukraine, not because there's an invading force, but because 80% of Port-au-Prince is being ruled by gun-wielding thugs. Haiti is a country of black people like you and me. I believe strongly in standing for our own, with our own resources. For sure. However, 
we must also be very, very aware of the history of Haiti. There have been many troops from Brazil, from the United States, who've gone to Haiti and failed. It is not a matter that we can run into. In fact, today as we sit, their prime minister is missing in action. Okay? It is important, indeed it is imperative, that the world, and if Kenya can help, helps Haiti. That is without question. How it is done? First and foremost, I don't even know whether this particular deal for the Kenyan police can work anymore. Because there's no airport for them to land in anyway. Haiti needs our help, for sure. But as the cards are changing and the realities on the ground are changing, whatever strategy Kenya had and the international community had is also changing. Today, they are talking about a proper invasion into Haiti because they have overrun the prisons. They attacked the police academy. They are controlling more than 80% of the capital city. Only 20% is being controlled. They are fighting with the army and winning. So the reality here, as we discuss the politics, or is it popular, is it whatever, the situation in Haiti is dynamic. It is changing every day. And do not be surprised in two, three weeks' time hearing that there is a full military invasion either by France or America. I'll tell you the history why France or America another time. I don't have that time. But it's an interesting history. It goes back almost 200 years of France really messing up that country. And I'm not ashamed to say it because it's a matter of historical fact. There will be an invasion because that country has become worse than Somalia. Um, very quickly, what is the accurate measure of a good nation? Whenever there is an international conference, we hear of public officers fighting to go there with their girlfriends. They are fighting. There was a time there was an Olympic, and you remember people were fighting for slots, and the number of accompanying ministers and people were more than the athletes themselves. And because Haiti is so beautiful and so nice, and it has so many beaches, I want government officers to fight to carry their girlfriends to accompany our policemen to Haiti. <laughs> that is a good measure of how Haiti is. And if we are not going to have public officers fighting to be accompanied by their girlfriends to go to <laughs> Haiti, the way they've been going for conferences worldwide, we don't want to go to Haiti. Number two, why are we signing a deal about peacekeeping in Haiti here in Kenya? We invite our president to go and sign it from Haiti. If it's a good place and you want to take your young men, go to Haiti, land in Haiti, go to State House if they have one, and sign a deal there in Haiti because it's a very peaceful place and it's a wonderful place and it's a good place to be. If the president can sign the deal from there, we welcome him to do it and we shall be happy to accompany our young men there. You know, I have always told people, Haiti is the size, it's 27,000 square kilometers. It's just the size of Mandera or Isiolo. Why don't we send one of our governors to have that conversation there? Why, what was business do we have with the landmass the size of Isiolo? I mean, we are having a conversation, something very far from us, close to the US, the size of Isiolo. Why are we having conversations about that country? Well, what trade have we done with Haiti? What do we sell there? Have you ever bought a peremenda in Haiti? Do you have a person in, of Kenyan origin or who, you know, who knows you live there? Has anybody ever landed there and then you saw a Kenyan delegation coming to dance and saying we are from Kenya and carrying a Kenyan flag? When we hear things happen wrong here, we see demonstrations in the US, in the UK by Kenyans. Have we ever had people who are Kenyans of Kenyan origin in Haiti doing a demonstration about anything? So what interest do we have in this country? Mm -hmm. Then I ask, people say they voted for and to me, I think we voted for Haiti Kwanzaa government. It's not even Kenya Kwanzaa government. Come and I'll boy. tell you why. why is it? Look at it. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> we are dying. Our people are being killed by bandits. You had an MCA saying, Muna toka matanga moja, munaenda kupanga matanga in Kitu. They've lost about 200 people. And instead of taking our policemen to go and finish the bandit menace in our country, because we are Haiti Kwanzaa government, we first take our policemen to deal with Haiti. The UN ratios are not working very well in terms of our police to people ratio. We are doing horribly. And here I tell people, just pick up your phone at midnight and start walking on the streets of Nairobi talking anyhow. And then if you can go for 200 meters, then we should send our policemen to Haiti. But you know we can't. Go to Central Police just for today. Ask them how many muggings have happened last night. 
and we are here planning to take our policemen to Haiti. So we are a Haiti Kwanza government, not a Kenya Kwanza government. Finally, on the same issue, I tell people, mm -hmm. have you ever have you ever seen a person who's just come from Ocha? You've just come from Machakos or wherever. This is the first time you land at bus station in Nairobi with your bag. And what happens to you? Can you imagine you today? If you were placed at the bus station in Haiti with a gun, and you are told now the bandits are in the equivalent of Moy Avenue, Uko bus station, Machakos. <laughs> First, how do you even know where Moy Avenue is? Two, the language they are speaking is so different. Everything, now that's what you've done to our Kenya police. You've taken them first. It looks like a man who's just come from, a, this is the first time he's seeing Nairobi. And you remember we used to say, we meet at KICC. And then you draw your bearing from there, or Afia Center, or Kenya Cinema. So now you've taken our Kenya police. First you put them in a place, in a language they cannot speak. And then you've put them in a place and given them, now we can control them. The bandits are hiding on, where do they even get more avenue? Probably even Gubu Max is not working there. So what we are doing is we are taking our young people there to be butchered and to come back in body bags. And let us be bluntly honest with ourselves. If they are going to go there, we want our cabinet to accompany them because it's a beautiful place. Every member of cabinet, prepare. Prepare with your wife and family. It's a holiday in Haiti. We are accompanying our policemen. After all, it's a beautiful place. Go stay for a month, then come back. Kenyans are willing. If there's one trip Kenyans are willing to support our ministers to go for, is Haiti. We shall pay with our taxes. If, if you want me to open a pay bill, where we are saying we want to collect money so that our ministers okay. can go to Haiti for a month, okay. I'll be the first to offer so that they go with our just, police. So message. back to just, facts. Just, uh -huh. just, just, just one uh -huh. quick statement. Uh -huh. If you go to Gilgil, you'll find estates called Sierra Leone, uh, another <laughs> one called Liberia. Because in the 90s, Kenya sent peacekeeping forces to those countries. Today, as we sit here, Kenya has troops in Somalia. Kenya just recently came back from the Congo. Each of those peacekeeping trips were not at points where Kenya was completely at peace. We need to understand that Kenya has pursued a certain diplomatic approach traditionally for years. Now, I'm not saying that I support the idea of uh, 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 just going haphazardly into a war zone. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there is nothing inherently evil in a country choosing to help another country, even though it does not have, it has not solved its own solutions. The Maasai people in 2001, when the World Trade Center was struck, they sent 29 cows to the United States to say pole. I don't know how many people got helped by those 29 cows, but guess what? It was a gesture. We need to return our humanity, okay? For me, the issue is not our police force. The issue is does Haiti need help? That's question number one. Question number two, is this a military operation or is it a police operation? Because the way that country is going, this conversation, the document that was signed in Kenya, I don't even think it's going to be enforceable because more than the, half of that government has already resigned. So the issues are dynamic. There's nothing wrong with Kenya trying to help. How we help, however, and how we make sure that our, our policemen, our soldiers, when they go there, they are safe. And they can come back like their colleagues and build an estate because of the resources they received. That's good news. Right. If they come back in body bags, that's not good news. That's how we should view yes, it. And the least. Police Act speaks of the police being um, capable of working within the boundaries of Kenya. Yes. You'd have to change the Police Act yes. so that you start operating is, in Tanzania and Uganda and true. Haiti. But have we sent our policemen outside the country before? Not yes. policemen. Police. We have. Oh, we police. have. Yes. Okay. We sent police together with the army in both Liberia and Sierra Leone. Uh, two, yes. you know, in matters security, sometimes it is difficult to tell the people of Kenya, me and you, what mode of operation is going to take place there. So a country cannot be led by all of us individually. 
we must have a president and his advisors, both in security, politics, diplomacy, who says it is right to go to Haiti or it is not right. Mm. Nevertheless, there are <laughs> other ways of helping countries which are utterly dangerous. For example, uh, today in Ukraine, not AU, not American soldiers are fighting in there, but their weapons are there. Mm. There are times we, we may probably ask the Haitians, you want help, bring your boys, we arm them, we feed them, and we transport them into war zone. It is good to die for your country, not for another country. That I agree, but I do not know what the government knows about the Haiti issue. But there are times where you say, because of the limit, because Haiti speaks French, that is the official language. Uh, Kenyans may yeah. not be able to ask for the roads, ask for where the restaurants are using that language. Mm. But I believe they know what they are trying to do. Maybe they just want to take the policemen who can speak French. But we can still help financially with the weapons, with the logistics, with intelligence, so that the only thing we don't give them are walking human beings. But if the president has chosen that we are going to give them working human beings, there's something he knows that we don't know. Okay, I guess we leave it at that and uh, wait for the developments to play out in the course of the coming months. Gentlemen, I think that's a proper note to finalize. We haven't talked about the appointments because uh, there's a man with nine lives. Chiloba is back. I mean... <laughs> third time. Eh? Yeah, this is third time. That bounces faster than a basketball. I tell you, when I grow up. <laughs> uh -huh. Any comments on that as we finalize briefly? I, 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 I think, and, and this country is interesting, when Kenya was presented with an opportunity to appoint ministers, Kenya Kwanza administration, the first thing we did was to appoint those who had corruption cases. All of them, the bulk of them, not all of them, the bulk of them. And then we had now to do another heinous job of trying to drop cases against them. I mean, look at a country with 50 million qualified people. And then you belabor looking for the ones with court cases, <laughs> and then you make them ministers. Now look at Chiloba. Look at the history of the controversies that have been there. Weren't there Kenyans who had no controversies to their names who would have been appointed to these positions? Why do we always have to look for those people who, when we appoint now, we have to do another job of trying to clean up after the names that had been there before. And, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if, for example, Chebukati comes, he did a good job, yeah, and okay. a few others. I, I don't know why that every time you have an opportunity to appoint people, you first look for the ones who have problems, and then you appoint them. I think I need to have problems first. I think I need to have <laughs> many court cases. Then no, I'll stand no, for... But, but no, you know, let me tell you, first. this uh -huh. country, you guys forget, there's a young man who pretended to be a lawyer. The day he was exposed, he became a celebrity. There is something... Even the policeman. Yes, there is something very Boy, wrong with this country. Mm -hmm. That the worse behavior you have, the more you insult people on Twitter, the more famous you are. There is something inherently wrong okay. with how the Kenyan collective psyche values character, values uh, integrity, versus the fact that, in fact, we were just joking, that guess what? The person who's most likely to inherit Baba, naturally, is Babu Wino. <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah, just yeah. pause and think about yeah, it. Yeah. Then think that this city of Nairobi once upon a time, 800,000 of us queued and voted for Songo. Then you tell me, is the problem how we appoint? Or Kenya is just a sack of rotten potatoes and whichever you pick, as long as they excess power, it will still be rotten. Well, they say our leaders reflect who we are as a exactly. society. So Kenyan society okay. needs to change. You cannot be a society of thugs. Okay. Then you expect angels to appear from where? Uh, I don't, In a I, minute, sir. I yeah. don't think we need to <laughs> crucify Chiloba. Okay. In this country, there are people who have gone to jail for political reasons, but they are charged with criminal offenses. There are people who have been vilified. Uh, during, uh, before Chiloba, there was, uh, there, there was a man called Oswago. And, and, and uh, 
in Luland, people think he's the one who made Baba not win. Yet, this is a man who participated nowhere in those things. There was a commission, there was a commission chair. People always look for a scapegoat whenever anything fails. So, if in his wisdom, the president thinks that some of these accusations that have been made against Chiloba are, are, are cooked up for political reasons. And of course, I know Chiloba is a very brilliant man. He has a way of appointing him to a place to serve. And let's see how he serves now. Okay, the taste of the pudding is in the eating. We'll, or oh, he'll be judged by his work. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate your input right here. It was a good discussion with many key points in terms of take homes for the audience as well. Mark Bichachi, Asante Sana for your time. Fanya Mambo Kinudia, always a pleasure. And Odoyo Widi, Asante Sana. Looking forward to hosting you gentlemen again soon with the presence of a woman, of course. <laughs> My name is Jesse Rogers. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Good afternoon.